Today, we're doing an entire coolant flush on this Toyota FJ Cruiser, and the reason for that is because this has the wrong coolant in it. But I'm gonna show you everything you need to know. With this vehicle, you'll be able to do a coolant flush on any vehicle. And by the end of this, you'll know everything you need to know to flush your own system. Toyotas are not supposed to have the universal green coolant that it damages certain seals and parts in the engine. In addition to that, if it's not properly flushed and there's a little bit of coolant left inside, mixing those two will create a sludge and that could cause issues in the engine, closing up ports that should be open with that sludge. So I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to flush your system entirely. Entirely. So just to show you, this is how we started. There's debris in here. It's dirty. It's mixed with the wrong coolant. This pink coolant is mixed with universal green coolant, which is not supposed to be in our engine. And then after our first flush, it's a lot clearer, a lot cleaner, but it's still a little bit clear green. Then we get it clear. And finally, we fill it with our proper coolant. And here we have our control. This is straight from the bottle and this is pulled from the engine. And as you can see, there is practically no difference between these. They look exactly the same. So before we start, always make sure that you're working on a cold engine. If your engine is at operating temperature or a little bit hot, the system could be under pressure. And if you were to open something, it would spew out boiling hot coolant, which will cause serious damage. So make sure your cooling system is cold. All you're gonna need is a couple of basic tools, a pan to get under your vehicle and take out that coolant and somewhere to put your coolant afterwards so that you could take it to the appropriate place. Don't let your coolant just spill all over the place. It smells bad, it's toxic. It's just not a good idea to let your coolant spill. All of the tools used in this video are down in the description below. The first step is going to be to drain your radiator. And that's a pretty simple step. All you need to do is go under your vehicle. And in my case, I have a skid plate. You don't necessarily have to take it off, but to make this easier to see, I'm gonna go ahead and take off my plate. With that shield removed, here is our radiator on this side, and right behind it, on this edge, we have our pet cock. So you'll have usually a port like this, either on this side or the other side. If you do not have this kind of port, if it's an older vehicle, a lot of older vehicles don't have this, what you can do is take off the tube that is the outlet or inlet, which is a little further down. There's usually a tube a little bit higher up. Take a look further up, we have that tube right there. If we take that tube, most of the coolant will come out, but that's your best option if you don't have a petcock. Now this petcock has a little tube. Here's a trick. Let's go back into the engine bay. I don't think anybody will mind if I borrow this tube to route my coolant into my container. If you have a tube somewhere in your engine that you could use for this, you could go ahead and borrow it. So we're gonna take our tube and connect it into there. And now we have this spout that we could put right into our bottle. And it's that simple. We're ready to start draining the coolant. So make sure that you label your containers, especially if it's something that someone could drink out of, it, it's toxic, so make sure you label your container. So quite simply get your pliers and turn this, and with a little bit, should be easy to turn it by hand. You can see our coolant is flowing out and we're just gonna let that drain into here. As your coolant drains, it's gonna build pressure in the system, so make sure you take off your cap so that pressure doesn't build and your coolant can continue to drain out. Our coolant is completely drained. We have no more coming out. So we could remove this and it's still gonna be dripping for a while. So we're gonna leave the pan underneath and just take this out. This will drain all of the coolant that's in the radiator. But because our engine is cold, the ports that access the engine are closed off. Our thermostat is closed. That being said, there's a lot of coolant in the engine that we're not going to be able to take out by just draining the radiator. So in that case, there are a couple of options. Engines come with a port specifically to drain the engine coolant. So if you go online and look for your engine coolant drain plugs, you'll find a diagram of where they are. Now, it's important to mention that a lot of vehicles, if not most vehicles, do not have an engine coolant drain plug. The next best option is to remove your thermostat. Your system has two tubes coming out of the radiator, one down here and one on this side. And one of these tubes will always connect to something that looks like this. This is your thermostat and it's usually very easy to get to. You remove these bolts and inside of here, there's a component you could remove and put everything back together how it was. What that will do is open up the ports and allow your water to go into the engine and flush it out. So if you don't have an engine drain plug, go in here and take off the thermostat and then you can put it back together and run your water through it. In our truck, we come to the left side right here under the wheel well we take a look in there 
we have this little bolt here with a spout. There it is. That right there, we just take off that bolt and through this tube, the coolant from the engine will drain. Wrench with a couple of extensions and break that 10 millimeter bolt loose. Number two, extend this and there we go. And I'm gonna let the engine drain now. Our petcock is completely drained. We let it drain here for another while, but we can close this back up now. With that, our engine plug is completely drained. Take a look at that. This is where our level is, so it is very important to drain your engine as well. There's a lot of coolant still left in there. If you don't do this, you're not gonna be properly draining your system. All right, so now we can close our spout here. Just give it a bit of a tightening and we're good. Make sure you put your tube back where you got it from. Now real quick, make sure your reservoir doesn't have any coolant in it. It usually will have. So take that off and drain that out as well. And it's pretty easy to remove. All right, so here is a rip. And usually you'll have a little more than this in there. I have only a little bit, but let's go ahead and drain that. We can simply take a container and drain this out. And with this drain, we could put it back. And next, you could start filling up your system with distilled water. Now, demineralized, sodium-free water, all of that stuff is the same thing as distilled water. You could buy distilled water at an auto parts, but it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg when you could just buy a big jug like this for a dollar. And this is gonna ensure you don't leave any residue in your engine that shouldn't be there, and it's just a good practice. And we're gonna put this super flush radiator cleaner. It's a good opportunity to use this. Then we're gonna drain all that water out and our engine should be nice and clean and have none of the old wrong coolant in it. We don't need the distilled water to go into this container. So I've disconnected it and just leave it on the side. And now we can start filling our system with our distilled water. So we simply get our funnel and we start filling it up. And we're halfway through our five liter bottle and we're gonna go ahead and pause here to put in our cleaner. And with our cleaner in there, we can continue to pour in our water. All right, so we're gonna turn on our engine and that'll get our water pump going and circulating the water into the engine. And so we could put in a little bit more water here, whatever might be necessary. So let's go turn it on. So pretty simply, we're gonna turn on our engine. So now we can let our vehicle run and we're gonna be checking our temperature to make sure it doesn't get too high or spike or whatever it might be. And with the vehicle on, we're going to let it get up to operating temperature. Doing that will get the thermostat to open and allow the engine to fully circulate the water and cleaner we just put in the system. And we're gonna leave it like this for about 10 minutes. So we should keep an eye on our temperature sensor and if you wanted to get warm a little bit faster, you could accelerate a little bit. And in addition, accelerating is going to accelerate that water pump and push more water into the engine. All right, so our engine is heating up. Operating temperature is usually right around the middle. Once you start reaching operating temperature, you want to turn on your heater, go on to heat, turn it on all the way, and make sure that your heat gets hot. That means that the liquid is getting into your heater core, and more importantly, the heater core is getting cleaned out as the liquid is circulating through it. So once at operating temperature, we're gonna set a 10 minute timer and let this run for 10 minutes. As the 10 minutes are going by, it's a good idea to pick up your tools and just get everything cleaned up because once this is done, you're going to have to wait about 40 minutes to an hour for the engine to cool off enough to take out this water. So let's start picking up. With the 10 minutes up, we could turn off our engine. And right now the engine is hot. It's at operating temperature. So we can't go and pull out that coolant because it's very hot right now. So we have to wait 40 minutes to an hour to get that coolant to cool down enough so we can handle it. If you wait 30 minutes and you hold this line here and it's still unbearably hot, then it's still not cold enough. You can leave your hood open and it'll cool faster. After working with coolant, make sure to always thoroughly wash your hands in the area where you washed your hands. Coolant is toxic. So it's been 40 minutes and I could comfortably hold my hand here over on this side. It's still quite warm, but it's manageable. So 40 minutes later, we could start draining our system. And doing that is exactly the same steps that we did earlier. We get it out of the petcock, we get it out of the engine valve and drain it all out into containers. All right, so our water is still kind of green. So as one final step, we're gonna take another jug of distilled water. We're gonna fill it up while we leave the petcock open and the engine drain valve open, just to flush everything that's left out. 
So this water is gonna be going straight through the system and draining right out of the petcock and the engine drain valve. All right, so our pet cock is completely drained. And over here at our engine drain plug, we also have no more liquid coming out, so we're completely drained. And we can finally fill up with our proper coolant. With our pet cock valve closed and our engine valve also closed, we can start filling this up with the proper coolant. As you're filling up, it's a good idea to go under the truck and check that there's nothing leaking anywhere. It doesn't look like it, so we can continue to fill in our radiator. All right, so our radiator is filled up, so now we can start up the engine and let it get up to operating temperature. Same drill as before, turn on the engine and let the heat run. And there we go, that's how you flush your cooling system. And we end up with nice, clean, proper coolant, even if you had the wrong coolant in your engine, you changed it out for a different kind. It's never a good idea to have two different kinds in here because this, over time, as it churns in your engine, will turn into sludge and cover up your ports and damage your engine. So getting it flushed and nice and clean like this is pretty important. Okay, so it's been a couple of days later. It's a good idea to come back and make sure this is topped off as the engine sucks more coolant through it. It could go down a little bit, so make sure you top off your cooler and your reservoir. And it's also a good idea to get another test after your engine's been churning for a while, make sure it still looks nice and clean. And in this case it does, they still look pretty much the same.